Today I'm going to continue the progress on a flower that I've started as a sampler. Um, and this is one of the techniques that you're going to be doing as well. And I wanted to show a video on how to complete one petal. Um, obviously this would be a process that's repeated for each petal. Um, but we're going to start with just one and it'll, we're going to work on this one right here. So my first step, and I've already done this, is I've selected a brush that's an appropriate size. These petals are fairly large. You can see the size of my finger. I could probably fit maybe three or four fingers on that petal size. So I've selected my six round brush, um, which is one of my, I would call it an intermediate brush size from my set. Um, and so this is a good size. It's going to allow me to cover ground quickly without um, having a lot of loss of working time or w working moisture in the paper. Uh, you certainly don't want to work with a brush so small that it doesn't allow you to get um, moisture on the paper and still work while it's wet. Um, I've also pre-mixed my colors. The petals in this case are this lovely um, quinacridone magenta color and they are fading toward uh, the complement color which in this case the complement of red is green so I do have a green mixed up on my palette as well and I've pre-mixed those colors. So let's get started. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to wet this petal. We are using the wet on wet technique because I want a soft slow diffusion between the two colors which is also known as a two color fade. So I'm wetting just the petal and I'm being really careful to stay inside the lines. I want to make sure that I'm not making any uh, rough edges or going into a space that I don't want the color to go to. So I'm really paying attention to my edges especially when I'm adding the water. Now these petals that I've pre-painted um, are completely dry. I painted those last week in fact so they are not going to run or cause any kind of problems with flowing into the wet space that I'm creating. So I'm going to make sure that this is nice and evenly wet and I can do that by checking for light reflection from the lights here in the classroom and I see that this is nice and shiny and evenly wet. So at this point I'm ready to start with the colors complement first and this is uh, something that's contrary to most students thoughts but I do want to place I'm just kind of dabbing my brush along the shadow area which is going to be close to the center of the flower and you can see that that water that wet surface is allowing that color to wick up into uh, the petal space but staying inside the wet space that I've created. While that's wet I'm going to now take my actual petal color and place it along the edge on the outside of the flower, the very outer edge of the petal. And I'm going to just ease that color along this edge here. And because of the water, it's going to begin to flow down the space toward the green, which is exactly what I want it to do. Now at this point, I'm not finished, but I do need to pause and wash my brush out and remove all of the color. I'm going to wipe it twice, well actually three times on the side of the dish. I want to make sure that I get as much moisture out as possible. I'm going to dab with a little bit of pressure on a paper towel and now I'm going to pull this color, I'm going to encourage this color downward into the complement zone. And I want to make sure that I'm not spreading heavily into that complement because I don't want to get that color on my brush just yet. I'm going to go into that space. Um, once I have it to this point, um, now I can start to pull that color right down over the complement. But if I were to grab here and move up here, I would get green in this area and I don't want that. So I'm going to make sure that I am mixing those two colors down here in the shadow range of my, of my uh, petal. So I'm washing my brush out and dabbing it onto the paper towel and I want to pull some of this color downward. And when I'm doing this, I can actually create a little bit of what's known as fluting, which is creating some uh, ridges or lines within the petals. Um, sometimes in nature we'll see that uh, petals actually have some raised and lower areas or highlights and lines within the petal uh, texture. So I can create that little bit of fluting on the petals. You can see that the light space with the dry brush stays um, and just becomes a softened line and allows for some detail and interest to the petal. So that's finished and I'm going to let it sit and dry just as it is.